Hi, Ben from Bioremedy here. In video three, we looked at how to manage a water body in an industrial setting, and in this video, I wanna take a closer, more specific look at aeration and circulation. Aeration, one of the most important water maintenance and quality factors in many different industries. There are some incredible benefits of utilizing aeration in aquaculture, agriculture, commercial, and industrial water environments. States of anoxia, anaerobia or low dissolved oxygen levels in water bodies can create a pathway for chemical and biological reactions often leading to toxic compounds. That's where aeration comes in. Conventional aeration, which is the direct injection of air into the water column or projection of water into the atmosphere, is the most common and accepted method of water remediation. There are many types of aeration devices, but the most common are diffusers, venturi systems, and surface aeration systems. Each of these systems have their own positive and negative aspects and suit different applications better than others. So let's take a walk through it all together. Diffuser aeration systems generally comprise of an air blower or compressor with a hose running out of the system to a diffuser station. Diffusers are an effective way to introduce oxygen in small scale water bodies where very little circulation is required. These Diffuser systems essentially create a small bubble size which floats to the surface, transferring oxygen through the water along the way. Venturi systems utilize a combination of aeration and circulation, making them some of the most effective systems that introduce crucial oxygen at higher transfer rates. Venturi systems draw air from above the water surface, have a high RPM propeller that creates a negative pressure in a chamber and allows injection of water and air in a microbubble form. Surface aerators propel water into the air via a mechanical device so that two elements come into contact and finally transfer oxygen from the air to the water. Surface aeration is required and highly recommended in all situations where degassing your water body is fundamental. In many applications, the removal of harmful gases, which are dangerous for aquatic animals and for the health of the water basin, is far more important than mere water oxygenation. For example, in aquaculture environments, a surface aerator is often required to avoid high concentrations of ammonia and CO2, ultimately helping to create a perfect environment for the species being bred. So how do you choose your aeration device? Well, there are a few things that you should consider. First, aeration efficiency is an important consideration when selecting an aerator. Efficiency can be calculated by measuring the amount of oxygen transferred in relation to the energy used per nominal horsepower. Energy costs are very important and must be evaluated in practical condition. Aerators of all kinds have different oxygen transfer rates and standard aeration efficiencies and are often measured by their ability to introduce a set volume of oxygen per kilowatt hour running cost. Secondly, an important feature to consider is the water flow. This must be considered when choosing an aerator. The water flow refers refers to the water suction depth and the area of influence of a surface aerator. In these areas, the water will be oxygenated and mixed with no stratification and generally a better water environment. Thirdly, one of the most important factors when looking at an aeration system is bubble size. A large bubble size will rise to the surface quickly and explode, releasing small amounts of oxygen to the water and gassing the majority back into the atmosphere. This means that the smaller the bubble, the longer it is in contact with the water, therefore more oxygen is transferred to water as it takes longer to reach the surface. The final consideration should be around the aesthetical appearance of an aerator that uses energy to push limited volumes of water as high as possible, where the same energy may be used to push larger volumes at lower heights. This reduces the practical performance and the aeration efficiency of an aerator. Generally, the oxygen transfer rate of a water capacity aerator or splashing surface aerator is 100% higher than a water pressure aerator or fountain. As we move into circulation, it is vital to understand the importance of circulation in water bodies. Circulation allows homogenization in water columns, which is fundamental for the health of aquatic ecosystems as it allows for more consistent concentration of nutrients, oxygen and temperature. Dams, lakes and other forms of thermally stratified water bodies consist of warmer water with the higher oxygen concentration at the surface and cooler water and very low oxygen concentration in the lower levels. Sometimes the natural effect of wind contributes to partial mixing of the upper water layer, but often this is not enough for complete homogenization. 
Circulators are then required in these cases as they have a deeper, more effective and continuous action in the water column. This is particularly important in large reservoirs that are often deeper than 3 metres. Good circulation creates water currents that allow for better consistency across the water column and can help avoid sediments becoming anaerobic, providing a healthier aquatic ecosystem and resulting in a lot of money saved. Circulation also reactivates contaminated and unhealthy water, revitalizes the bottom soil, eliminating the risk of pollution, eliminates the formation of gases that are created by organic decomposition and limits algal blooms without causing turbidity or erosion. Circulators designed for water bodies are limited to motor-driven propeller-style circulation or pump systems. Both styles have their own benefits. These propeller-style devices are often efficient to run and have a capacity to circulate large volumes of water. Submersible motors with props can be set at different heights depending on the depth. Often they can be directional, meaning they can direct flows downward in circumstances where the depth is 5 metres or more. We hope that this video has helped you understand a little more about the importance of aeration and circulation in water bodies. And thanks again for watching.